Curve this, curve that, where's the curvature? If there is one thing I hear more than anything else, it's arguments concerning curvature. Arguably the go-to quote for a flat earther. They often believe it elevates them to untouchable status. Especially this guy. If you believe we live on a globe, with a circumference of 25,000 miles, you are a retarded monkey. Well, that's one way to piss off the majority of the world's population. Good evening, folks, and welcome to Alien Addict. We have none other than 007, YouTuber, musician, and a good friend of mine. And uh, let me just uh, say, before we mention the Flat Earth... Yeah. A UFO experiencer. Oh, yes. Yes. More than once. So, before we, before I ask the questions, Double O, can you just introduce your channel, yourself? I want to know a little bit about your music, what you're doing, and what your, your future is with YouTube? Uh, okay. So, Double O Seven. Um, my name's Richie. <coughs> I was born in England. I'm part Algerian. Um, or maybe Moroccan, but it's Algerian, because all the reports say my grandfather was born in Algeria but lived in Morocco. Anyway, um, I've I've had my channel. I've been creating on my channel since 2017, and um, it's my my channel. I'm trying to I'm trying to take myself outside of the entire situation and see what the bigger picture is for, for absolutely you know for all of us because i've always felt that we are the same we are all the same at the end of the day it doesn't matter what color skin you know you have or, or what part of the country or what part of the earth you live on um we're all the same and we're all we all kind of seem to behave in similar ways and that's why things like psychology and psychiatry and stuff exist you know because they've they've worked out that we can there seems to be a, a programming that happens during our childhood that helps create who we are you know um as as adults and how we deal with situations and stuff and i've had some pretty pretty horrific horrible things happen um and i've nearly lost my life four times so i've got this real vested interest in in my own happiness and and, and continued happiness and as an extension because all of us are the same i think whatever i find for myself if it works for me then I, I, it's, I'm obliged to share that information with everybody and say, look, this this is what's happened to me. This is how I've dealt with it. And this is how I'm dealing with it now. This is the difference between the two situations. When I was asleep and now I'm awake. And maybe you should, you know, maybe other people should try, just think, I'm not saying, um, to, I don't want to be followed, really, I don't want everybody following me, looking, oh, what's double O going to do next, what, you know, what do we need to do next, ask a double O, I don't want that at all, what I want is for every single person to take back the power that they have, that was given to them at birth by the fact that they were born, um, I understand that we were created. We weren't an accident. We didn't come. We went. We didn't evolve from monkeys. Didn't happen. There's anthropologists all over the world that are admitting it. Um, and this out of Africa hypothesis is laughable. Um, I can cite an anthropologist, Robert Seffer, who agrees with that. Um, his books can be he's, he's written some a lot of, he's written a few books really really good books i might add 
1666 being one of them, which talks about um, Rich. redemption through sin. Yeah, am I, side, am I digressing? No, 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 man. It's just why you're talking about, you know, um, evolution and that. So um, Simon Dan did a video about you um, quite a few and months ago. Um, you was featured on his yeah. uh, on his platform. I mean, what do you think about Simon Dan? Okay, I think deep down Simon Dan's an awesome guy. I think he's a really lovely, friendly, quite funny. He's got he's got quite a quite a sense of humour on him. Um, he's not afraid to put himself out there. Um, he, you know, he, I, I love the little skits that he does. You know, he does those little skits, doesn't he, where he, he pretends that he's speaking to his controllers or whatever, and he does all these little skits, man. So you don't, I, I don't think he's, really uh, long. So you don't think, he, think he's psyops, man, Dan? Some flat earthers do say that. Simon and Dan is part of a psyop. Whether it's consciously or unconsciously, I don't know. Simon and Dan is, with the greatest of respect, si, a useful idiot. Because what Simon and Dan does not ever do, and has never once done, not in one single video that he has, He's never been able to present any new information. He's never been able to present any of his own research. He's never been able to present any of his own experiments that have been done um, to prove what he's what he's saying. And the, the reason for that is because it's impossible for any of us to do that because only the scientists can do that. Only NASA can do that. Only the people that I'm trying to tell you are trying to control your perception. They've told you that they're the only, they're really the only ones that have got the technology to be able to work out all these fantastic distances and da, 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 all this, all these equations and everything. Well, I'm not going to get, get into equations with you or anything like that because you, you know his argument, but but his his argument went so. He, the video he made about me was about one of the first videos I made about curvature and lack of curvature and being able to see Gran Canaria from here on my on my roof from the beach uh, 80 meters above sea level um, you can see Gran Canaria you know all, all around where I live um, from from when I get to a certain, when I get to the Repsol garage after the Repsol garage I can if the air's clear I can see Grand Canaria. Um, he he was I was arguing I, I'm saying that you can if my camera had a powerful enough zoom if I had a uh, a Nikon P1000 that on a clear day I'd be able to zoom in and see a beach on Grand Canaria. Um, now, there, people that are arguing against it are trying to say that I'm only seeing the tops of the mountains, but anybody with any sense, especially if you stood here and you're looking at it, you can see that you can see the whole island. And then the, the fact that you can see there's a mountain that's less than 200 meters high, and it's actually behind or next to Las Palmas, the airport. Um, you can see that from sea level in my beach. It's less than 200 meters high and it's 125 kilometers away to that mountain. So the we have to take into consideration the, the which is based on the would, would more you than agree the, though on the which is based on the radius because they give a reading. Would you agree though that I know you don't think it's a globe, but scientists do say that there are flat bits. So, because it, it's not, it's not a complete. Neil Neil deGrasse Tyson did say that you know it, it is not a complete globe. It, it, it does okay. have flat can parts to it. Can you explain? Right, Neil. Um, 
just going to hold it down because every time Neil deGrasse Tyson, every time the name is mentioned or or his face pops into my head, uh, yeah. <laughs> the fact that anybody takes Neil deGrasse Tyson seriously as a any kind of scientist is laughable. Really, he's an actor. He's on the. He, he's an actual registered actor. Um, and anybody that sort of looks at personality, uh, at people with personalities, scientists of that caliber aren't good in front of the camera. They're not. So, they're not that sort. Of, I, scientists caliber have Asperger's and, and autism and you know they're, they're hey, not hey, good we've, in all, front we've of, all got a little bit of autism in us oh no we have yeah. we have mate I've actually I've actually speculated that maybe I've got some type of I'm, I'm on the autistic scale because I look at videos of me when I'm six years old and I think can I make you autistic just the way I am, just this little posh twat. I'm sorry to say I was. I was a little posh twat. Because I was, at the time, I was being moulded. I was being moulded and I was in private school. You know, my my dad was a successful businessman and mummy didn't have to work. And I was being moulded into what they wanted me to be because they, they, I'd been identified. So I wanted to get, get the most. But you've come away from all that. Yeah, ran, ran away. I um, I rejected it from day one, and I, I've got I my my reasons for that. I could never understand. Like I've, I've always felt different to everybody around me. Um. And I never, ever, nothing ever sat right with me. What was going on? It just never sat right with me. I couldn't understand it. And then I was reminded of a um, of a, an experience when my grandfather died. Um, when I, I was about six and a half years old, he died suddenly. Um, when my parents returned from the hospital, about four or five hours after he died, they returned from the hospital. When they got back, I was in my room talking to someone. They sat outside my room listening. And for, for a while, they sat listening. And then they, they ended up coming in because I think the level of conversation that I was having was concerning them. You know, the, the, just the, the things that I was talking about concerned them. They went in. I had a fit because uh, they'd scared him away. I don't remember the details of that conversation, but all I remember is that life changed after Grandma died. Everything changed, massive. Well, and yeah, I mean, I was in private school. Right, I was in private school. I'd, I'd, I'd been there for a year or so, and the private school was a school funded by. The lodge, the Freemason lodge that my great 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 grandfather founded. Because my family are Masons. I'm so, so your family, your family is the family of Masons. My, my great my great grandfather held the sword up to Prince Philip's throat when he took a thirty second degree. My grandfather was the one with the ceremony that held my great great grand my great my great grandfather was the one that held the sword because it's uh, it's done it's ceremoniously done under pain of, it's under pain of death thirty second wow. degree and he was the one that held the sword. My family so, was in the so, mason. So you ran away young at a young age. Hmm. I right uh, so I. I Ran away from, I, I just broke the mold and escaped the, the clutches. Um, oh, so you didn't, really, about, you, you just, you, you I didn't came away from it. Away. Yeah. Was, ran away. Um, and then, I mean, I guess I sort of almost did 
run away. Um, I didn't run away. My parents kicked me out. <laughs> but I was I was working in a recording studio and I wasn't getting paid. And I've been there for about eighteen months. And um, no, I've been there for eighteen months when I went bankrupt, owing me. But after I'd been there for about six months, mum and dad said, right, we're going to charge you rent because you're not at school anymore. And I couldn't. They, they said that when I said, oh, I'm quitting college because I've been offered a job as a chair in his um, MSM studios, mine Russian music studios, empty out. I just realised that. I used to work for MSM, <laughs> Martin Russian. No, that was M- MRM. MRM. Yeah, Martin Russian Studios. Martin Russian was the, uh, he was the original member of the Human League. He produced the Human League. He wrote Don't You Want Me? And um, he did work with the Buzz Clocks and the Stranglers and Paul Collins, Shirley Bassey. And so a lot of big names. But he kind of fell to the wayside and disappeared into nothing and then died of depression. Um, owing me about 18 months wages but um they said they said right you have to pay rent i couldn't pay the rent because he wasn't paying me so after six months they kicked me out so i went and lived on the on the studio floor for a couple of months and then um and then martin said oh come on you can sleep on my sofa so i slept on his sofa for a while yeah, and it it all went to it all went tits up in the end. I ended up in a really bad financial position and crawling back to mum and dad and getting on onto the into normal work, getting a sales job and get move, moving away from my music because that's what I always wanted to do was my music. So I went back into the sort of more more in line with what they wanted me to do, but I was doing it the only way I could now because I didn't have the education they wanted me to have. What point? Did you get into um, Flat Earth? 2000. I, I was first introduced to it in, around 2008, 2007, 2008. A friend of mine tried to wake me up to not just that. To, to a, He tried to show me some rabbit holes. I laughed him off. Told him he'd been doing way too many drugs and st- I stopped talking to him. Because it, he, it, it just seemed to like, Whoa, what happened to you? You've lost your mind. Um, stopped talking to him, went about my merry way, left England in 2009, was in Portugal, and by 2013, things had got so bad, I was so depressed, um, and I wasn't suicidal. I, I was never, I've never been in any, in any danger of killing myself. I, I'm not that sort of person. I wouldn't ever be able to kill myself. But that didn't stop me wanting to die every day. Just wanting to die. I just be like, God, please, could you just take me seriously. Stop breathing now. I'd be perfect. You know, and I didn't care. I didn't care about it. And I thought, I can't carry on like this. So I didn't want to look in. I, I, I'd already tried Christianity. and and because all of the other religions exist, and because Christianity didn't, when I saw the flaws in Christianity, um, sorry, I've got a fly tormenting. Um, I realised, I, re- I realised a long time ago, I think, that religion, organised religion, is just a paradigm, and I didn't understand what a paradigm was back then. I didn't understand. Understand how paradigm a key part of our existence. We, we all live within these paradigms. Um, but I did, and I sort of instinctively knew, knew and understood that as religion, the types of organised religion have taken the same truth. They've taken one truth, and they've taken out of it what they wanted, and then created their own religion around it. So they've all all religions have got these real f- fine threads of elements of truth to them, and that's why they resonate with people. I saw that the only one that was worth really looking into was Buddhism, because it was about the self being happy, not in a selfish way, because I figure 
what use am I to anybody if I'm just, I feel like I'm a useless piece of crap that just wants to die? What use is that to anybody? What use is anybody to anybody who's just sat there well, in, in depression and, you know, everything's shit and the world's crap and what's the point in any of it anyway, and, you know? I'd much rather be useful to, to people, to, I'd r- much rather be, it would give me far more self-esteem if I can't do anything for myself to at least do something for somebody else um, because it feels good. It does. So, so it that's feels... what got you into it, just the, the, the going into Christianity, me... then going into Buddhism. Yeah, well, that's what got me going into Buddhism was like to to fix myself so that then I'd be able to actually be of use to the world, you know. So it actually <laughs> made you decide that it wasn't spherical. No, 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 no. Research in Buddhism, very early into research in Buddhism, I came across the term Nibiru. I came across the, the concept of Nibiru. And that fascinated me. I was like, wow, what's this? Because I loved Star Wars. I loved the big time globe believer, man. I didn't believe that we'd landed on the moon in 1969, but I believed that we'd landed on the moon since then, right? Sorry, you broke up then. You believed we'd landed on the moon believed that we went to space. You believed we went, but you didn't believe we did it in 69. Breaking up. Did you say you believe? Yeah, we just had a bit of poor connection there. Yeah, I believed that we did it after 1969. I do. I believed we did it back then. All right. Um, so I started researching Nibiru. Nibiru brought me into contact with Zacharias uh, Stitchin and then Zacharias Stitchin and then um, as a result of him Graham Hancock um, and then Jordan Maxwell, David Icke, Alex Jones was in there somewhere. Um, well, so, what, so what I what I actually accepted early on was that um, they were lying to us. They were lying to us. They've been lying to us about loads of crap. Okay. Well, what do I do if somebody's been into my toy box and they've been messing with my toys and they've smashed them up and then and, and, and you know put all the toys back and in my toy box there's broken toys and some of the toys are good. Some of the toys are bad, right? Some of them are totally out of date and, you know, just need to be chucked out. You need to empty the toy box and go through everything individually and and see what's actually worth anything anymore right now. Because now is different to how it was 20 years ago. Rich. Now now is a totally different time to now 20 years ago. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but... Do Do you get... I do, I do, uh, but I just can't. I'm just, I'm just concerned about the timing here. Um, we need to keep this around about an hour. So, the when you when you found out and you thought, okay, I don't think lying. is a globe. They're, they're lying to us about no. They're, they're, so I, I accepted that they've been lying to us about everything, and that made me. Because I, I was seeing so many flat earth videos coming up, Eric okay. Dubay up all the time, and I thought, Do you know what? Let's go and see. Let's go and see what he's, what he's saying. Because all these other things that I thought could never be true, and now, and now I find out they, they are true, things that I thought were true, and now I find out that no, always that was a lie, I'd be stupid not to go and look at this and consider it. So I went and looked at it, and I had cognitive dissonance. I I was sat there, and during the whole thing, I'm sat there going, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. (sighs) Yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. Can't argue with that. Uh, I can't argue with that. Uh, I can't argue with that. And then at the end of it, I'm going, no, no, 
no, no, no, no, bollocks, no. Right? I was doing that for a good six months, six or nine months. I was doing that. And then it just I kept watching all of these different videos and they were all talking about curvature, the lack of curvature, and how to how to see, how to prove the lack of curvature. And then 2016, 2015, sorry, 2015, I moved, I came here to Tenerife. And what have we got here in Tenerife? We've got islands that are hundreds of kilometers away that should be hidden by curvature by the maths that they've given us, that NASA gives us. And the maths that they quote, the, the portrayal of Earth that they give, with the radius, with the parameters that they've given for it, the radius and the, and the circumference, it creates a law that has to be adhered. Can I ask um, this is it. A, a question to somebody who believes the Earth is flat? Um, what are meteorites? I don't believe the Earth is flat, by the way. Can we just say this? I don't believe, that, I'm not saying that the Earth is flat, because to say that the Earth is flat introduces a new paradigm. Because then you have to provide the parameters of that flat Earth, right? What I'm saying is, Earth has no parameters. Okay. Right, okay. That's interesting. Everywhere that you exist, it's flat. And for hundreds and hundreds of miles in every... But up there, yeah, that is, in your perception, is not space rich we're back we are back yeah up there right. is you up there is not space as we know it as as we've been told well, as we've been told it's not a vacuum it's absolutely not a vacuum so my question is what are meteorites don't know don't know. Ab- absolutely don't know, right? Don't know what meteorites are, don't know what comets are. But I do know one thing, that if you go back to the old records of what happened when certain comets were going over the sky, there's some pretty wacky reports from the 1700s and the 1800s. When these comets were in the sky, there were deadly, deadly um, poisonous gases, noxious fumes. There was a deadly fog. There was electromagnetic activity all over the place, sparks coming off things, crazy, crazy stuff going on every time one of these comets was in the sky. And it coincides with massive, massive earthquakes, volcanoes going off, all of this stuff. So comets are linked and they're within our atmosphere. You would, agree, you would agree that when a something comes through the atmosphere and it hits the ground, it leaves a crater? I, I would absolutely agree that, that something that has being projected through the air that comes in through our air and then hits the ground creates a crater but i don't know where that has come from how how, like think about this with comets think about this with comets this is where cognitive dissonance sets in with people it's the same as with parallax right we're 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 spinning at a thousand miles an hour going around the sun at what is it i can't remember uh 200 and something thousand miles an hour which the sun is then going through our sun's going through galaxy these figures offhand because he doesn't doesn't do it man he doesn't do that um so the sun is moving through our galaxy at 1.3 million miles an hour I think they're over the universe a million miles an hour. Now be real and think about all the movement that's taking place 
we're not spinning around a static sun. We're spinning around a static sun that's spinning itself. It's going in circular motion itself. But it's not. It, it's going like this. It's spiraling. Everything's got. We're, we're moving through space like this. There's a really good animation for it that exists online of the universe. And this is the one that they put forward. They say, actually, we're not just here like this. We're going like this, right? Our little sun has enough gravity to hold Halley's Comet, a block of ice that's flying around through our galaxy. It's managing to hold, A, hold on to it, because it's meant to be the gravity of our sun that's keeping that, that's pulling the Halley's Comet back in. And it's on this, what, what is it? It's a 70, 70 year? Rich. 70 year, yeah. So what I was going to say, though, is um, honestly, forget all the the dimensions and speeds and this, that, and the other, because I'll have to ask Google that, because, you know, I, I barely made it through school. <laughs> <laughs> but well, when you look at the moon, yeah, it's got craters on it. Right. Lots of them. That's, that's another good example. When you look at the craters on the moon, so, so that's going back to Earth being hit by uh, meteorites, yeah, making craters. Uh, oh, listen, you... think about this, the moon, right? All the craters are uniform. They're all perfect, 90 degree, dish, dish. everything's hit perfectly, right? If, if these were craters, it's like every single crater was fired from exactly the same Every single uh, meteor was fired from the, the same area of space and all hit the moon in, exa- in the same at the same angle. Yeah. Please. Well, we only um, see one angle of the moon. <laughs> all right. There's another thing as well. They tell us that the moon doesn't rotate. It doesn't spin. Doesn't do anything. Yeah. It's, we only see one face of the moon. Do you watch how that face? twists but it actually when you when you watch it and i've spent hours of time watching it i've made a couple of videos i spent three days observing it over three days and over a whole day doing a time lapse watching it as soon as the sun goes down it doesn't happen until the sun goes down when the sun goes down the the moon's face starts to rotate and it moves about 45 degrees and then it stops. What's that? Explain that to me. Now, I've witnessed it and I've filmed it and I've proved it. So explain that. To me. How does what's that about? How, how does how does face doesn't doesn't it's this it's there all day. <whistles> Sun goes down and suddenly that's what it does. I've watched it, I've filmed it, I've proved it. The mysteries of life, Rich. It is, it, I, no, I, I agree. There's a lot of things that I, that I look at and I do question. But You want to do about the meteors, right? Yeah. So, I, like, they are all gone. They're all uniform. They're absolutely uniform. Maybe well, not where they are, maybe not where they've hit, but the angle that every single one of those meteors has come in on has been exactly the same. There's not a you mean single. That they don't crater. hit at a certain angle. There's so not they a don't single. They scrape across the moon's surface. Well, there is no. There is some. If you zoom in to the moon, there is definitely is some scrapage, <laughs> so, so to speak. But I, I understand what you're saying. Um, mm. I, along your travels, and we were briefly we spoke about this before um, we went. Uh, and started the interview you know you approached uh, our good friend Richie from Boston yeah man actually Richie was was one of the reasons that I became a creator on on um, YouTube because he put out a video saying look look if you want to talk to me uh, uh, New Year's Eve I'm gonna to talk to some of my subscribers <clears throat> and um, I was like man I want to talk to Richie from Boston 
And it was, I'd been watching YouTube for like um, nearly four years. And I've been wanting to interact with all these creators and not really getting anything. You know, Richie from Boston re put a comment, a reply comment on one of my comments once, you know. And then he did the email. Then he put his email up. So I emailed him and he actually he replied to my email. And I was like, wow. And then he did this thing. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to get on with Richie from Boston, man. And there was also another guy called Quinn Michaels. Um, who I was following, and I've got quite a lot of Quinn Michaels. I downloaded most a lot, a lot of his research, which is absolutely golden. Right, it's golden. The guy is a loony bin. He's an absolute loony bin. He's he's kind of gone off on this narcissistic ego trip. He doesn't even realise it. He thinks he's a Buddhist. Um, but his research is good, man really really good so he was out in the mojave desert or something and he burst a lung we, we were speculating as to whether it was actually a direct weapon direct um direct energy weapons thing that happened because basically there was a hole burnt into his lung and um and they were saying it was one thing or another and he was saying and this is like one of the big flat earth channels Hmm? Is this one? No, of the he's no, 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 no. Quinn Michaels isn't a flat earth channel. Um, Quinn Michaels is a conspiracy. Thinks he's a guru channel. Okay. I don't even know if he even exists anymore. But so he um, he base uh, he he was in hospital. So there were these two things that I wanted to make a video for videos for that made me create and start creating on YouTube. Um, now I can't remember why we were talking about that. <laughs> My train of thought's gone. Because I asked you about, uh, we were talking about Rich from Boston. Um, yeah. Yeah, if I'd spoken to him. So, yeah, I made a video, a two-part video. Um, I think it's on my channel. It's one of my first videos. Um actually directed at him and then I made another one for Quinn Michaels um do you still like Richie from Austin you still watch him I, right no, I don't watch him I don't watch him anymore I can't watch him anymore um I, I stopped watching him because it was too the energy that was coming off of him so it was the energy that comes off him I can't deal with that sort of energy it's too confrontational it's too. Um, he he's also he's also stuck very firmly in a biblical paradigm, and he's talking about fear. You know, it's all it's all fear. Be scared, of the devil. Be scared of the demons. Be scared of it. Put on your full armor of God, because otherwise, then Satan's gonna come and eat your soul. Yeah, it's just a biblical paradigm. No, I don't buy into that. The so one name has always uh, popped up all the time, and a lot of people would argue uh, to say that he, he wasn't the founder, but the, the founder of Flat Earth, um, to a lot of uh, non-Flat Earthers, uh, the name Mark Sargent comes up. What do you think, and I asked you this question before, but what yeah, do you think I, about Mark? I never thought of Mark Sargent as a founder of Flat Earth, or however... Um, well, he, no, he is one of the, like Mark Sargent and Eric Dubay. Um, I think Eric was there before Mark. That's the thing. I, I think I don't think I knew about Mark Sargent until um, until the the Globe Lies stuff. Um, pretty certain I didn't really know who he was. I just have to say Sargent. though, uh, Rich, that before you tell us what you think about Mark Sargent, there's a lot of times that I've seen Mark speak about flat Earth. And he will get questioned or called out on something. I saw it in a documentary recently. Uh, I think it was on Netflix. And he kind of gets stuck. And he he almost looks like he doesn't believe in his... Unfortunately, this, this, right, this is the trouble, okay? That Netflix, their documentary. So Netflix, anybody who knows, 
anybody who's been doing the research into uh, into things and just got their finger on the pulse knows that Netflix is a 100% controlled um, disinfo site. So it's owned by the deep state. Netflix is is one way that they're financing. Uh, like who was it? Obama's just got a book deal, and a, a massive million, multi-million pound deal from Netflix. Netflix. Do you remember when Netflix started? And um, they came out again. I know. That, just, I know the blockbusters company. got to offer to buy them and didn't regretted it and went under. Right. Uh, so Netflix came out, and they were, you know, they were on the internet. You got posted a DVD and then you posted it back for free three days later or five days later. Or whatever. You, had, you had it for a week or whatever. And you just played a monthly subscription and you could have so many films every month for free. They just send you the films. You chose what films you had. It, it went from called that. X, that was it. It was called something else. Was it? That was called it, something else. It was called Netflix, dude. Was it? Was it? It was, it was called Netflix. I'm pretty sure it's always called Netflix. Might be getting the mind. But it was, a where, it was a warehouse full of DVDs that they posted out to people and they posted them back on this free postal service. That was a few years ago. Now they're a multi, multi billion dollar production company. They, they're producing their own movies, they're producing their own TV series, they're, they've got their own book deals going. With ex presidents, do you know what I miss? Just going to the video store and looking for a DVD. Blockbuster, man. Do you remember that on a Friday night? You go in there on a Friday night and you get your you get your M and M's and your your Maltesers and your tub of Hog and Das ice cream, and you and you get like three movies and you'd have them for two nights. Yeah, my kids will never experience that. And that's that makes me sad because that was I used to love that as a kid. Your marathons, man. You do an Evil Dead marathon, like watch all of the Evil Dead over the weekend, or just Star Wars marathons with just tubs of ice cream and Doritos and oh, mate. So, that's so, a day. so going back to the question, what what is what do you think of Mark Sargent? I like him. All right, I think that if he is connected in any way shape or form to a body of people who are in a have a soul who are more involved in trying to control things than than being the the um <coughs> the followers of things then he's on the more benevolent side and he's trying to shepherd people towards a soft disclosure of reality and flat earth is a stepping stone to understanding the nature of true reality this is a war on our perception and it's our perception of reality. And whether you have an objective or a subjective perception, if that objective perception that you hold is true, is actually based in reality. This is a real. And when they say in the in the um, in Revelations, in John's Revelations, they say um, this is a for this is not a battle against uh, flesh and blood, but this is a against powers and principalities. So that's what we're, we're... We're fighting against us, all of us, you, me, all of us. doesn't matter if you believe in the globe or if you believe the Earth is flat or you believe it's a pizza. Um, we're all in the same boat, man. Right? And, it, and that's, that's quite true. a fitting... That's quite a fitting um, analogy because... We're all working in maritime law, and from 1666, every single person born is declared a soul lost at sea, with a straw man created for them, written in block capitals on your birth certificate, 
and you, your soul, you as an actual person, as a being, right? So forget, forget if the Earth is flat or if it's a globe, right? And try and think if right. So let's just say that we were we were actually created. And that makes total sense because if you look at the complexity of life, to think that it crawled out of the swamp, to think that it started off as gloop and, and it ended up me. I think quite highly of myself. I do have an ego. I do have an ego. Every single one of us has an ego because you don't get through life without one. Right? That's that's what they've done. They've they've completely tipped the balance. We're supposed to be balanced individuals. Every one of us is meant to be emotionally balanced, emotionally, physically, mentally balanced, so that we can then navigate through life. We're we're out of whack and out of kilter and everything and <clears throat> the ego has been inflated over inflated and the, the spirit has been confused and beaten down and it's it's all about the ego this entire world now is all about what you've got how much money you make what clothes you're wearing and if you feel you know if you're good looking and you've got a good body and you, um, you earn a lot of money and you drive a nice car and you wear Hugo Boss, your hair gets cut in, in Tony and Guy, you spend £300 on your haircut, you know, to just have and just trim the sides a little bit and maybe just trim your eyebrows and, and do your beard and do all your manicure and all that crap. That's what it's all about now. That's what the world is all about now. Nobody, uh, n- and, and instead of being centred selves, they've made everybody self-centred. And focused on the material, it's very, very, very materialistic. Everything's materialistic. So before I get on to um, asking you about, because I wanna, I wanna know some of you. I've seen some UFOs, which is really interesting coming from somebody who does not believe notable, in the globe. Three notable experiences. Three notable experiences with UFOs. Before, be, before we go into that, so. There's many a time that I have mistaken the ISS. Uh, oh, very... oh, I've got one on camera on my channel. One of them's on camera on my channel. Oh, would you mind if we we can can we play that when I edit this video? I've made over a thousand videos and I don't know where it is. Oh, if, if we find it, we'll put it out. Um, so I've I've some t- I used to look up into the night sky and think, what is that? I used to see this object every night coming home from work. And this is before I even got into any of this stuff. And I realized it was the ISS. So, and I, I, I do see that from time to time quite often. So as, as flat earthers, now I'm not saying you've, you've corrected me and said that you're not a flat earther, but you just believe it's what, extra realms and what have you. Um, um, how do we explain the the ISS? Um, the ISS is a right. So satellites exist, but they're on hot air. They're on balloons. This is documented. It's provable that they a very very first satellite launched was launched on a big ass hot air balloon well it wasn't hot air it was a hydrogen thing um what they was the same you know what they put weather balloons out on, basically on a giant weather balloon um the um the so thing people have taken pictures of it as well yeah the, the, and and it's possible to map it to, to say you know what time of day, where is it and you see when it's going to fly over your space in in the air right i believe that that thing whatever it is exists it's absolutely up there it's flying through space i've seen what i believed to be satellites when i believed in space i believed them to be satellites i've seen in my lifetime countless i don't know how many i used to enjoy looking because it's like a star and it's like wow which what you know which, which star is moving are any of these stars moving? and then you see one and you're like yes it's a star 
and it's moving. Oh. But it's, and you think, no, it's a, it's a satellite. Well, it's something up there that's reflecting, possibly reflecting light, um, or possibly emitting light, you know? It's, but it hasn't got people on it. It does not have people on it. There's absolutely no way. The, 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 the reality behind the physics um, of the, the ISS, the, the speed that it's moving through the air and everything, um, what would happen to the human body traveling at those speeds is something that can't be, you, you can't go away from it. Yeah, but there's no don't, atmosphere, is there? No, but, but there is atmosphere. It's just thin. But when you're but talking just, about... The, but but the, hang on. Just because the atmosphere is, just because the atmosphere is thin, the vessel is travelling at thousands, 10,000 miles an hour. So the atmosphere within that vessel is travelling at 10,000 miles an hour. And everything in that vessel is traveling at 10,000 miles an hour. So say, for example, that there is no human beings on the ISS and it is a balloon that's got it up there. So how is it, some, there is how, is there, it, how is it traveling so fast? Well, it's mili- we, um, they, they've already... Um, we would call them, or they would call it, anti-gravity. Right? Anti-gravity. It's not anti-gravity. It's understanding electromagne- ma- electromagnetism and relative density and buoyancy and all of those things. In my, in my humble opinion, the air is really just a state of water. I'm just trying to find a bit an example. Okay, um, yeah. So, I think the so air is for example, safe. this is Earth. Yeah. Mm. In my if, mind, if, if you, Terry Pratchett novel, maybe. Oh, well, you know, I'm I'm just talking about the the majority of flat Earth is what they believe how the how the model is. It's all right, I'm so seeing here. Just one second, yeah. Rich. One second. Yeah. Um satellites for me on this model don't work because on a ball yeah they can they they, they can move around it okay where where are they going to go on this i mean they go that way satellites aren't what's doing your phone signal satellites don't do your phone signal or communications no no communication is done by a satellite Not one single communication is done by a satellite only satellite images are what are relevant here images that they give us from satellites we're not it, satellites have nothing zero to do with our communications all of that is emf and Rich, you've gone again. The satellite's out working, Rich. You've gone. Rich? No, there we go. Back again. You're back. You're back. You're back. Um, Did you get that? Did you get what I said? I got... Satellites are not communication at all. No, No satellite, not one single satellite is involved in our communication. The only thing that is relevant when it comes to satellites and what they what actual real satellites that are up there floating on balloons is for satellite images and mapping. So that that's all there for. Yeah, well, mobile phones that's to do with you know that the masts, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's it's optics. down here. Down here, it's all EMF and fiber optic. It's all all it's all light. But and, it is possible frequent. to make a satellite phone call. Because mm. my mm. dad did it out at sea. No, oh, no, your dad used a phone. Yeah, no, he used a phone that's capable of transmitting longer distances. That's what he used. 
you didn't use a phone that bounced off a satellite because satellites don't exist so for communication. They can't exist for communication. They're too unreliable. So it, explain the mo- so the modeling you must have an so you don't say the Earth is so I've asked you. I'll get to the point here, Rich. Don't worry. So when we first I met, I, I thought that you thought that the Earth was flat. No. So what shape do you think it is? I believe, I feel that I know in my heart that the Earth is a realm. It's an observably flat realm. Um, everywhere you go, it's observably flat. Everywhere you go, it doesn't matter where you go on the Earth and how you get there. It doesn't matter even if you fly. Even if you fly, if you think you're seeing the curvature, you ain't. You, because even Neil deGrasse Tyson will tell you it's impossible to see the curvature. Okay. He, he admits so. Um, that's an optical illusion where you think you're seeing the curve because you you're ta- you want to see the curve. Basically, I thought I saw the curve when I was on when I was on a British Airways thing in 1980 I think it was 1988 87 I remember it was 87 and I remember thinking I saw the curve flying on my way out to Lanzarote thinking I saw the curve because I you know I was yeah and we were at 33,000 feet 33 <laughs> yeah um so they do fly people up you know, James May, James May uh, yeah. recently well, got... Because, um, well, because of how it works, because if they'd flown James May up there and said, the Earth is flat, and he, but he went up there wanting to see the <laughs> Earth as flat, that's what he would have seen. You see what you want to see. You see what you, well, you see will... in the video as well. You do see it in the video. The video you see. Sorry, for language. <laughs> you didn't say it all then. In the video, what you see is lens curvature. You don't see any curvature of the Earth. I know um, about that. I've got a, one of these little things. Yeah, but even with wide-angle lenses, any kind of type of wide-angle lens, basically any type of wide-angle lens or fisheye lens or anything like that. It, that's where the curvature comes from because if a normal lens is used, a curvature okay, can be seen. So every, every pilot. 140,000 feet, 140, feet, no curve, infinitely flat plane. The videos are out there on YouTube. So everybody, everybody, every pilot that goes up to the altitude that can see the curvature of the Earth, are they in on the lie? No. They see the curvature of the Earth because they want to see the curvature of the Earth because they say that they should see the curvature of the Earth because everybody's told them at 35,000 feet they should see the curvature of the Earth. So they look, they look and they see, oh yeah, look, it bends off at the edges. And they don't think to go like that mm, and see how, oh, no, it doesn't actually bend at the edges. I just want it to bend at the edges. But if I look at it and I want it to be straight, oh, look, it's straight. Because that's that's the reality, is if they looked at it and they wanted it to be straight, and they said, all right, look at that and and just tell yourself that it's not. It is actually a straight line. They'll look at it and they'll say, oh, yeah, actually, it's a straight line. Because they, they, they can perceive it. They allow themselves to perceive the fact that it is only a straight line. It's just that it's something to do with the curve of our lens and it's something to do with our perception, our cognitive dissonance. I mean, I did a, a video quite a few years ago now when I was at, I was quite polite about it. And I, I just asked um, flat earthers why why it is that we don't always see the sun because the sun is it's, it's extremely bright. I mean, it's, it's it's beaming down in here right now. And I, I said, why do we not always see it? You know, when it's nighttime, how can we still can't see that big, bright star? out it because but, on that model it you'd you always see it you think that you'd always see it because you you're thinking it, that yeah, the sun that is so bright that it the light is shining from 93 million miles away 
And when you're when you're transferring that previous model of the sun, you have in your mind that it's a ball of gas uh, that's burning th 93 million miles away, and so it must be super bright and super hot. And then you bring that model down into this flat Earth realm. Think, how does that work? Because I'd see that where no matter where it was on the Earth, I'd see it. Well, the Earth, the, the sun isn't what you think it is. The sun is more of a big, bright light in the sky. Big, fuck, big. Nearly did it again then. I'm really sorry, viewers. I'm really sorry. Not used to family channels. He's sorry. Right. Um, it's an over 18. None of, my, none, of my, none of my videos are suitable for kids. <laughs> YouTube's um, not suitable for kids. So, yeah, it's it's like a great big halogen bowl that's you know it's not halogen obviously the the heat that's coming off it apparently there is an argument from scientists that the sun is cold and it's something to do with the radiation acting it is the, it's the it's the effect of the radiation Mitch, we are getting to... some major into like i don't know what sounds something's interfering oh that's me. I put my phone next to the blooming mic. My, sorry, that was me. Sorry. Should we do uh, that bit again? No, I, I, I still heard what you were saying um, about the, the sun being a big allergen bulb. <laughs> and then you went, no, no, no. It's not being the... Um, the sun is not this great big ball of burning gas that's burning at so many million degrees or whatever, you know? That's not what the sun is. The sun is a source of light, and it's not as bright as they say it is, because it's only about 3,000 miles away, which is calculated using Pythagorean maths and uh, um, uh, corpuscular rays, basically, isn't it? It's the, it's the point. You, you measure the angle of the corpuscular rays, and you can work out that the sun is about 3,000 miles away. Um, so, Rich, here's a question for you. Um, point, the point of light, that the point of light is about 3,000 miles away. Like I say, I, I am not going to get in debates on you through this interview. This is just a kind of a friendly interview. Uh, and, you know, say, for example, that everybody that w is a glober, yeah, or everybody who's into the flat earth or into that, uh, who's took that step further and, you know, is into the realms. Mm. Still very observ observably flat, yeah? Mm. At some point, and I've been thinking this, in the next few years, somebody's going to get proved right. They have to do. Oh, mate, I'm so glad you said that. So everybody thinks that, that what Trump's going on, what, what's going on in America with Trump and NASA and SpaceX and everything is um, that Trump is, is all, you know, is all behind it all, the whole space thing. Me and Roxanne and Janine all think, that Trump knows the deal, and he was very careful. His wording. He's saying very Trump's flat earther. Saying that Trump's, Trump's a globe denier. No, 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 no. Trump is a globe denier. Okay. He's a globalist denier, right? He's not a globalist. Doesn't want this one world government. He wants sovereignty in nations. Yeah. And he, when he talked about the Space Force, he was talking about exploring new horizons. And he wanted out that way. He didn't go like that. I think, I've about, seen that in, I think I've seen that interview. Is, is Buzz Aldrin next to him? He's talking about new horizons. He's pointing out. We're, we're going to find... We're gonna we're gonna have it disclosed that there is land we've never been told about on Earth outside of the realm 
there is some sort of barrier, right? There's some sort of firmament barrier. And in our our speculation is that the, the Antarctica isn't a continent. It's actually a there is a barrier. There's a ring around us, and that's why the Antarctic Treaty and is has stayed in place since 1956. It's never been questioned, it's never been disputed. But when single countries fall out of line with it, it's the only agreement in history to ever work. And that's just too much of a coincidence. You know, not coincidence, that's too much of a anomaly. That just this, every other single agreement that's ever come to uh, uh, by nations. There's always one nation that changes their mind or wants to or just steps out of their line, or whatever, and that either their, their agreement falls down or it gets changed or whatever. This thing has been rock solid since day one. And there's all that's happened is more countries have joined in and, and, and agreed to it. You go and chart yourself <coughs> a boat and try and get down to. Um, <coughs> any part of Antarctica that isn't, well, no, just try and go to Antarctica, charter a boat and go to Antarctica and see what happens. See I'll how it will set a go men, for me up. See how quickly the men with guns turn up and say, Turn around now, you're not welcome here. Can't go below the 66th parallel. So the reason why he asked about, um, you know, at some point it's going to have to all kind of come out one way or another. You know, you know, in the next four to five years, NASA are, are sending. It's going to have to be done slowly, man. People are going to have to be eased into this information because it's absolute but I'm shattering. OK, NASA is sending another rocket up to the moon to land humans on the moon. Again, that, two, that, yeah, 2004, that, that's, that's, 2000, 2004, 2024 that's, to 2025. That's, that's the goal that's been set for them. And Trump knows absolutely that they're not gonna they're not gonna be able to do it. It's not gonna happen, dude. What you. if it does happen? No, if it does happen, it will be a CGI thing. It's not gonna happen because it can't happen because the moon is not something that we can land on, and that's so, proof. So what is the moon? Don't know. Actually, don't know. I uh, actually a video came up on my feed today that I need to watch, and it's uh, from Stack in the Attic, and he's talking about how the moon was actually originally our sun. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah. Um, I I want to watch that because I think, yeah. That could be right, because there was actually a time in the records, in the ancient records, when the light was different. Do you we know what I would like to see? Oh. I, I don't know if it's actually happened. Um, as Simon Dan ha had an interview with uh, somebody who's into Flat Earth. Has he spoke I to some? I don't think he's ever had the, um, the balls to actually sit down and debate with anybody. Because he doesn't have any arguments that he can bring against anything. Well, I'm, I'm sure he could debate with a, with a flat earther, especially with Mark Sargent. <laughs> you know, he doesn't seem to know. Dude, I'm absolutely certain he couldn't. Sorry, right? Simon Dan, I I like him. I, I like the guy, the person, because I think he's a harmless guy that just got maybe got bullied at school. Um, because he's you know. A bit of a geek. Well, I'm a bit of a geek. Mm. Saying that but, I did get bullied at school. Dude, you're not sat there tr presenting yourself as a scientist, are you? Well, well, that would be impossible. You know, if you if you if you if you look to my school report, it just he, says uh, Ollie is the class. Plus. Called himself Cy Man Dan, the science man. 
there's nothing scientific about him at all. If you were to sit down a scientist and say, watch this guy and, and explain to me what's scientific is about anything about him at all, about his approach, about his arguments, about anything about Simon Dan that's in the slightest bit scientific. But do you think some people might say that about certain flat earth channels that present the science to you? Anthony, um, Sleeping Warrior, and Nathan um, actually present the science. He doesn't. He parrots um, things that he's heard and seen. He's not researched a single thing he parrots what he's already been told and gives stock answers he can't actually provide a, a sensible logical um, coherent argument against anything that's said he just parrots things back I mean because he's I would like to think there are some great people of our time, but I'm pretty sure that you're going to shatter my dreams right now. Uh, Elon Musk has been one of the people who I've I've always. <laughs> he's still there, Rich. <laughs> you know, I've always so, loved Elon. Uh, I'm hoping he's going to send that me a flamethrower. Uh, Elon Musk. I'm hoping he's going to send me a flamethrower. I love Elon Musk, right? But I know when I'm watching Elon Musk, I can see it in his face. I can see it in his bloody face. It's like I can read his mind. The guy is sat there going, still going along with this. Fucking. Boy. You're still going, you can edit that out. You're still going along with this. Crikey. Um, He's a South Park called it out, man. South Park called it out. They did an episode. They did a an episode where well, a number of episodes where Cartman is trying to get everybody to Mars. He wants to escape to Mars, right? Because he doesn't want his girlfriend Heidi to find out about the things that he said on the internet um, before through this troll trace program that the Danish have d- developed, right? And he goes because he says, oh, SpaceX. Yeah, they're going to Mars. So he goes to SpaceX with Heidi, says, hi, yeah, we're, we're here. We want to we want to escape all the crap here on Earth. We want to go to Mars. And the guy says, yeah, take a seat. He says, what? Yeah, there's loads of people want to leave the want to leave the Earth right now. Go and take a seat. So he goes and takes a seat with Cher and stuff. And then Elon Musk comes out and he's got a little flag. And he goes, hi, everybody. I'm Elon Musk, and he goes and taught, and um, Cartman goes, "Oh great, a tour guide." Hey, we we don't want to see you. We want to speak to the guy in charge. See, <laughs> yeah, I, I need to watch this episode. Uh, but I've always thought, you know, this with the the likes of The Simpsons, the likes of South Park. Do they know more than we do, or is it, or is it just to kind of get a rise out I've, of people? I've got an interesting theory about that. When they did it, I don't think they knew what they were doing. I think South Park maybe, but, but when the Simpsons, when they put their stuff in, I don't know. I don't know, but I think that they were channeling. I think they were channeling out of the ether. The information was coming to them. They didn't even know really what it meant. I think that probably what's his name um, from the Simpsons, you know, that did the Simpsons. It's it's quite possible that he sat there going, "Wow, I don't, I don't even know why I put the two towers there, and I, you know, the nine eleven and all of that, and Trump." Down the, the escalator, man. That was just one of the writer. One of the one of the writers thought, yeah, it'd be good to have him come down an escalator, and it didn't mean anything at the time. But now, whoa, look at it now. I think it's um, it's like divine thing. I think it's there's a the, if you, if you do depending on the research that you do on YouTube and stuff, you can look into things that. Um, you know the esoteric teachings and stuff and the idea is that that 
an idea exists, right? It isn't something that is, or or some somebody can have an idea, right? And it and that thought goes off and sits off in the ether, and they don't do anything with that idea. That idea can sit in the ether for who knows how long, and then at the right time, somebody absorbs that idea and you know and they and they think oh i've just had this great idea right and it happens with songs so in 2005 2006 i wrote a song and it just came to me man it was like oh because when i write songs when i can when i actually write a whole song it's like oh i wrote a song wow with lyrics and everything they just come to me the whole song just like comes from nowhere it's really weird it's just a, a, a phrase goes through my head i sit there thinking about it and then i put my pen to the paper and it goes <laughs> and the whole song comes out right i wrote a song called patience and then like six months later take that and gary barlow brought out patience have a little patience yeah, yeah. oh yeah yeah do you know how freaking similar to my song that was and i was like whoa no way gary barlow stole my song no gary barlow didn't steal my song it's just that idea was floating around in the ether that it was like maybe a few people had thought about having a, a, a writing a song about patience or whatever and the, the idea was floating around in the ether and there's probably a hundred or maybe a thousand people that sat there and, were, oh, and wrote a song about patience all right and it's actually a really patience is a virtue man i was talking to a friend a very good friend of mine about it yesterday we were talking about how you have to have patience with some people yeah i agree patience is a virtue man it's one of the things that i learned when i went to prison mate. going to of, prison teaches you patience speaking of patience so a lot of the ufo viewers of this channel uh they've probably sat quite patiently and listened to maybe something that they're not into but they are into ufos so right. I'm interested to see how somebody who believes that the, uh, you know, that this is probably it and there's not, there's no space, there's no little green men visiting us, but you've had what, four UFO encounters? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so when I was younger, driving around with my friends, looking for UFOs. Um, going to the crop circles, going to find crop circles. We went oh, so you to... used to go hunting? Yeah. Hell yeah. As soon as I passed my driving license, dude, when I was 17 years old and I had freedom on the roads, I could go wherever I wanted. One of the first places I went to was after the beach, I went to Stonehenge. I went to try and find crop circles all in, Aves, uh, in um, what is it, Avesbury and around there. Why you so yeah, we it was so I was out. I had um, right. I was driving my friend's car. She was she was a little hotty. She had a Vauxhall um, Vauxhall Nova. Do you remember them? Oh yeah, Novas. Man. She had a it little was, Vauxhall it was Nova. The car oh, back in the day. Sorry, actually, it wasn't a Vauxhall Nova. It was a Fiesta. It was one of the new, uh, well, it was like only a couple of years old, the style Fiesta it was. It was nice, man. She was letting me drive it. We we're driving through these woods and we just see it up in the sky, this huge wheel of lights and like with a star, giant wheel of lights spinning and just cartwheeling through the sky. And one month like that, too. God, Absolutely. just check in. Um, we all sat there absolutely like mesmerized by it. We, and then, you know, close, how so close? I was up, it was in the sky, man. It was up, it was flying up in the sky. It was, it, it was in space for us, you know. It was, it was like out in the stars kind of thing, near the stars. It wasn't in our atmosphere, it was. And oh, uh, so back like then, really high. Back then, I, 
space, dude. Back then, I believed in space. You know, this is 1995. I was, I was fully indoctrinated. Um, so very high in the sky. Yeah, that's why we knew it was an, a UFO. So, yeah, that's not a plane. That's not a space well, was, station. That's a that's. It was a it was a wheel of lights. It had it had um, what are they called spokes, you know, and it was just turning through the sky and went and disappeared. Wow. And you know we all oh, wow 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 one of us seen anything in the news about it and then you know woke up the next day with amnesia. Like we all do. The next day you wake up with amnesia. Previous day. <laughs> so you just get on with it. Get on with the new day. All the new distractions. So that was the first experience. The second experience was um, I was in Portugal. Uh, I was up on the roof. My The guy that I was living with kept pigeons. I let the pigeons out for their fly, for their little exercise. They were racing pigeons. It was brilliant. You let them out. They went out, flew around, played games with each other. And then you called them back and they all flew back. It was amazing, man, these pigeons. Well, I'm watching them and I, see, and I look up and I see a battleship. Only way I can describe it. A battleship? Uh, uh, like a Klingon battleship type thing with an extreme the light at the back of it was so bright it looked like a star and this was in the middle of the day and it was a, it was a, I could see it it was a I could see this dark shadow but I could see that this thing was 40,000 at least 40 50 maybe 60,000 feet above the the surface and it was going fast my God, man, it was fast, but it just went from the very, because there was a blue sky, clear blue sky, and it just went, it's gone. None of the sound effects, that was just for me. No, I, I appreciate the sound effects. That, that reminds me of, um, I don't know if I've told you this, because um, we, we did an interview beforehand a week ago, but the sound was pretty poor. Um my dad uh, was out in the mer- when he was in the merchant navy. Something shot straight over the ship, but that was just a an, an object that was just light. Um, as far as I know, I need I, I need to get him on the channel at some and point. That, that's interesting, dude, because in 2016 or 17, I was creating on my channel, so it must have been 2017, 2018. Um, I'm trying to find, I was trying to find it actually, the video, wasn't I? That's what I was doing. Um, there we go. Did I just film a UFO? Here it is. This is it. So I was filming birds, right? I was filming birds. I'll send you the link now and you can, um, you can take a look at it. Am I okay to play this uh, when I edit the video? No. Oh, all right. So this is number five. This is number five. I've I've got five experiences, uh, and two of them are on. Well, if you send me some of those, Rich, then we can put them in in the edit, so people can see them, and I'll leave the links to your channel as well. Send you this one on um, Skype now. Yeah, so um, I was filming these birds, right, and. They're the the Canarian uh, parakeet type birds. They look like tropical birds, man. The first time I saw them, I was like, whoa, we're, it's like we're on a tropical island, man. They're like really beautiful, really, really beautiful, man, with red and green and yellow and orange feathers. So I'm filming them. Then when I'm watching it back, my mate says to me, what's that? And it's in slow motion, right? iPhone slow motion. It's uh, 1080p and it's eight times slower, I think. Like an 800% um, slowdown. And this thing 
just goes and it's flashing right so i slow it down i slow it down i slow it down and it's still moving me at an obscene speed and it's flashing like strobe how, how big how big we talk it was a tiny 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 little light which suggested that it was thousands and thousands and thousands of meters or feet or whatever above the earth i need to find it so you can see it i'll send you this one first i need to find it so you can see it though dude well um, this recording will be available for both of us rich so after you know when you get a bit of time sit down and watch it and send me some links and if you send me the just say that these minutes um oh know. no dude I've made the videos and I've I've actually edited videos saying what you know what is this and I've focused in like on this this one was one that I filmed at night and yeah cool it's uh, this is just the light that you see but it's travelling really fast um the, the the link that I've just sent I'll find that other one I will it wasn't the ISS it, no oh no it's not the ISS okay. this thing this thing that was flashing went like this. Yeah, the but, I, I, the ISS doesn't do a U-turn. I'm, I'm, I'm talking fast. Like in real time, what it did was this. It was gone like that, that quick, right? And I slowed it down to something like 32 times, and it was still really fast. It wasn't a bug. It wasn't a thing. It was a flashing light, and it way up there in the sky stupid stupid instances so going back to ufos right so that 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 was my third experience then i think my fourth experience was this one that i've just sent you um and then i sent and and then the thing that happened the other week that i never i couldn't catch it on camera it was too quick and that was what i mentioned last week when we spoke and that was a that was another that was a silver metallic object that was traveling at ridiculous speeds making impossible maneuvers for a human to make in a mechanical aircraft um and it was all happening above the the mountains um to the left of Tady as I was looking. So believing what you believe, what and what do you think they are? Right, I I am fairly certain that the ones that are material are made of metals and stuff. Um the majority of those are man made. We've made them. They're just advanced technology. They're advanced military technology. Um I believe that the information they've got from somewhere where possibly they have mastered the technology, but those aren't the ships that we see. Um, and I think that the, the orbs, the lights, they're, they're beings. I don't think they're... Um, I don't think... I don't think that they're vessels transporting beings. I think they're actual beings, like spirits or things from outside of this realm that, you know, are not meant to interact in this realm. That we're not meant to be, or maybe maybe we are. I, I personally, I personally believe that everything that we've been taught is science fiction and fantasy is how things were before in real world and this reality that we're living in now is a false reality that's been constructed for us to bring us out of that reality because in that reality each and every one of us had sovereignty we had control over our own realities we had control over our own lives we could exist we could be we could actually be um but thanks to a small minority of people um who consider themselves who have extremely just magnificently huge egos and have put themselves above everybody else. Our queen being one of them, um, George Soros, the Rockefellers, a- any of the Clintons, you know, all of these people who think they have a divine right to rule over us, um, 
they're they're basically upholding a paradigm that removes us from our true reality and, and we're this this physical reality that we're in now is a false paradigm <clears throat> yeah we're physical beings this is all fit th this this isn't this isn't gravity this is relative density um or electromag it's a bit of electromagnetic because everything's got an electromagnetic frequency to it absolutely everything on this earth has got an electromagnetic frequency to it, hasn't it? Um, even if it's a really 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 low one from like a lighter you know a physical object um what's the word inanimate an inanimate object so even inanimate objects have got a, a frequency that they give off um i've lost my train of thought no, no, it's it, yeah, it's interesting, um, and it's interesting for me to to find out how somebody that that has your beliefs, uh, I, I'm not going to say flat Earth, just a, flat, a visibly flat plane, um, still believes, still has seen UFOs and believes there is something, it, but it's it's not it's not alien. Can't deny it. Can't deny it. But they're not aliens that have come from planets that are hundreds of millions of light years away this light years thing doesn't exist this light I've... years is stupid science it's so you don't believe in planets either there's no planets i know i believe in planet i i believe in wandering stars and thick lights in the sky the luminaries basically what are they the luminaries are exactly that but i don't know ex i don't know what they are because i know through my own research and, and just observation of other people's research. Um, astrology is a very real thing. When I, I've had a lot of charts done, um, South Indian, North Indian, um, I, can't, I can't remember the names of all the charts I've done, about tarot readings and all this stuff. When, when they do my charts, all my charts all say pretty much the same thing that, you know, the, the, the planets, these planets were here, da, 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 and this means that I'm going to be this type of person. And I read it and I go, wow, that's got me down to a T, absolutely down to a T. Now, when I, I mentioned this on the live thing at the end of the live, uh, broadcast yesterday or the end of the recording that we showed at the beginning of the live broadcast yesterday i mentioned that when i went and had my retiro readings and everything done i was told by more than one person that i was going to be really wealthy when i was older don't worry everything's gonna be good everything's got your everything that you want is going to happen and you, you're going to be really wealthy all i wanted was to live my life singing to people and enjoying the sunshine, not having to do very much, having a lot of time on my hands. I never really thought about being rich. Right? Now I live in Tenerife, where it's sunny all the time. Compared to England, you can count on the weather. Um, and I don't have a lot of money. I've got bags of time that I'm using. I mean, I don't have bags of time because I'm using it to do other things but yeah. it's that i want to do it's stuff that i want to do and it's most of it is researching and exploring and explorations and stuff so if time is actually the most valuable thing that we've got i'm exceptionally wealthy and everything that i've wanted has come true so far so my tarot readings were right and the description of me as a person because of where the stars and the planets were when I was born. Spot on. Bang on. And the description of me as a person as like how I how I am and how I react to things and respond to things and how how I'm indominat indominatable. That's the word. You know? I I will not be dominated. I will not be beat. I will not be held down. Nothing will stop me. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. Just keep going. Get up. 
get up, keep going. Somebody hits you down, get up, hit them back. Well, Rich, it has been one hour and 30 minutes now, so we are going to have to um, call this one. Damn it, man. I told you yeah. we could talk. Well, you're welcome back any time. Um, but just before you go, um, just let, let let people know where they can find you. Uh, you can find me at 007. That's D-O-U-B-L-E-O-H-7, the number seven. Uh, that's the two words, 007. That's on YouTube. Um, and you can also find me um, by doing live streams with Roxanne, the globalist denier. Um, I'll give you all the links. I've given you all the links, actually, haven't I? I gave you all the links last week. Yes, you did. Uh, they're in the thing. I'll put them so, in. Indeed. How can I help? Hey, uh, Google. How you doing, babe? You all right? Have you enjoyed our conversation? She keeps doing that. Freaks me out. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, I, I will leave all the links in the description for you. I, um, I'm doing real reporting with Roxanne and Rich. Um, and we've got the Really Woke Show. So there is the Really Woke Show channel. There's Roxanne the Globalist and I, a channel where we do the live streams, and there's my channel as well. And we're, we're, I think we've got um, a website planned. Uh, we've got a, a new platform planned for um, great to, you know, for if anything goes with YouTube or whatever. You can also find me on Instagram. But because of trolls and stuff, you're going to have to ask permission because you can't follow me unless I say so. Instagram <laughs> post. To be honest, forget I mentioned the Instagram because I don't use it. I see it as a waste of my time. So forget that. I've got an Instagram account as well. I'm, I always forget to check it on it. Uh, but yeah, mate, it has been an absolute pleasure. And yeah, we'll have you on again. Um, it, yeah, it's... Um, I still, I still think it's, uh, it's a globe, by the way. I know, I know, but I mean, but it's good that we can all get on. Can I ask why that is though? If I, if I can say, right, if you can, if you can agree that the maths, right, that if the Earth has a radius of four thousand whatever, and a circumference of approximately twenty-five thousand miles, and it is a globe as depicted, right? then that means that there has to be a curvature. And if b- because of those parameters that they've given, 4,000, 25,000, that means the curvature is eight inches every mile squared, which means that if you're stood at sea level, the, the curvature will start 3.7 miles away from you at the horizon line. That's where the curvature, for, where you first start to notice, that, or should, first start to notice the curvature because that's the line of the horizon 3.7 miles away right anything past that is just getting further and further away exponentially because of the law of curvature right which means that when i'm stood on my beach something that's 125 kilometers away which is roughly 70 something miles should be hidden below more than 200 meters of curvature, right? And that that means that a mountain that is less than 200 meters high, 125 kilometers away, it will be impossible on a globe to see that. It will be impossible. That's a fact. So how can I stand on my beach and film a mountain less than 200 metres high that's 125 kilometres away if we live on a globe? Well, Rich, if you stand at Dover, you can, st- you, you, you can see. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday. But if you uh, also... But, favorite, uh, but, but just quickly before, be, before we go... Uh, if you do load up Google Earth and you load up England and France, yeah, the curve is so little. Google Earth is a model that's been that's been presented. No, but you know what I'm saying. The curve is so. No, little. no, 
Do you understand that that model? Do do you understand that that model that they present in in the on the on the you know in the graphics that model? What you say it's a wrap round. but it's also designed to uphold the model that, that it's all designed around the model that they're giving us. So it will reflect what they want it to reflect. It won't show you. Um, it, it it won't. It's not showing things accurately because if it was showing things accurately, you'd be able to send a, a weather balloon up to 140,000 feet above the Earth's surface, and it would be able to film clear curvature. It would be absolutely evident to everybody that the Earth is curved, but. There are countless videos on YouTube of weather balloons that have gone up with unmanipulated images and that haven't been affected by lens curvature that are showing it's an it's flat and the horizon rises up to eye level all the time. There is no curvature. If there's no curvature, how is it a ball? How is it a globe? This is where the cognitive distance, you, when you go, yeah, I know, but you, could, you, you can stand at Dover and you can see France. And so, well, it just makes sense then, doesn't it? That, you know, it's not really that far away. Well, no, it's not really that far away. But because they've set these parameters of a, of a globe that's 25,000 miles in circumference and, and a 4,000 whatever mile the radius, Rich. because of those, because of those mean that, that you would see that if that was real you would see the curve between here and france you would see it Rich. if the globe was real i'm going to set this debate up with you and simon Dunn, yeah but it's oh. the debate's not with me <laughs> but on that note i am going to have to say good night god bless this has been alien addict this is 007 au revoir au revoir thank you very much guys